Good evening. I am starting the video for the redemption of Scrooge. God of what is to come, watch over us in the immediate future as we reflect on your promises for the days ahead. Guide our discussions so that we may speak your wisdom and consider how to face the future with hope and faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I would what I would like to watch with is <clears throat> or start with is we have the final chapter, which is of course the chapter after he wakes up. And I just want to review what were the signs of redemption, if you can remember any of them, that we saw as the night started with the ghost of Christmas past. It can be something you can remember from the ghost of Christmas past or present or future. Do you remember signs that we saw? Saw that he couldn't believe that was him. <laughs> Ooh, I don't have. I don't have that one written down. <laughs> he stated that he was not the man he used to be. Either. Yes, he does state that to the ghost of Christmas future. He started to show a softer side toward his nephew when. I forget which ghost it was. I think it was the ghost of Christmas present when they were at the party or something. I forget when it was. Anyway, he had said to one of them that he, no, I'm sorry, I was talking about his clerk. He mentioned that he, he just had some thoughts about some words he had had with his yes i've i've written that down <clears throat> he said this is with the christmas the ghost of christmas past the ghost says a small matter said the ghost to make these silly folks so full of gratitude small echoed scrooge the spirit signed to him to listen to the two apprentices who were pouring out their hearts in praise of fezziwig and when he had done so said why is it not he has spent but a few pounds of your mortal money three or four perhaps is that so much that deserves the praise it isn't that said scrooge heated by the remark and speaking unconsciously like his former not his latter self if it isn't that spirit he ha it isn't that spirit he has the power to render us happy or unhappy, to make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. Say that his power lies in words and looks, in things so slight and insignificant that it is impossible to add and count them up. What then? The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. He felt the spirit's glance and stopped. What is the matter? asked the ghost. Nothing particular, said Scrooge. Something, I think, the ghost insisted. No, said Scrooge. No, I should be, I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's all. Yes, that was the one. Can you think of another one? attitude toward Tiny Tim and whether he would live and showing finally some human compassion. Spirit, said Scrooge, with an interest he had never felt before, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat, replied the ghost, in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no, said Scrooge. Oh no, kind spirit, say you will be spared. 
If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, none other of my race, returned the ghost, will find him here. What then? If he'd be like to die, he had better do it and decrease the surplus population. Scrooge hung his head to hear his own words quoted by the spirit and was overcome with penitence and grief. Man, said the ghost, if man you be in heart, not adamant, forbear that wicked cant until you have discovered what the surplus is and where it is. Will you decide what men shall live, what men shall die? It may be that in the sight of heaven, you are more worthless and less fit to live than millions like this poor man's child. That was the one, yeah. Can you think of another one? I will go ahead and share the other ones I've written down. The first one was when Scrooge was <clears throat> in the schoolhouse and he was observing himself as a young child. I wish, Scrooge muttered, putting his hand in his pocket and looking about him after drying the eyes with his cuff, but it's too late now. What is the matter? asked the spirit. Nothing, said Scrooge, nothing. There was a boy singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should like to have given him something. That's all. That was the first one. I have two more, and, I, and you kind of alluded to this one, Richard. The ghost was greatly pleased to find him, that is Scrooge, in this mood and looked upon him with such favor that he begged like a boy to be allowed to stay until the guests departed. So he was enjoying this party even though he wasn't um, truly there. And then again, Fred says, he has given us plenty of merriment, I am sure, and it would be ungrateful not to drink his health. Here is a glass of muffled, muffed wine ready to our hand at the moment. And I say, Uncle Scrooge. Well, Uncle Scrooge, they cried, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to the old man, whatever he is, wherever he is, said Scrooge's nephew. He wouldn't take it from me, but may he have it. Nevertheless, Uncle Scrooge. Uncle Scrooge had imperceptibly become so gay and light of heart that he would have pledged the unconscious company in return and thanked them in an inaudible speech if the ghost had given him time. I'll be right there. Then three from the Christmas future Ghost of the future, he exclaimed, I fear you more than any specter I have seen, but as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I hope to live to be another man from what I was, I am prepared to bear your company and do it with a thankful heart. Will you not speak to me? It gave him no reply. The hand was pointed straight before them. Lead on, said Scrooge, lead on. The night is waning fast, and it is precious time to me. I know. Lead on, spirit. Then later he says, Spirit, said Scrooge, shuddering from head to foot. I see, I see. The co case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. And then, of course, his final confession. Before I draw nearer to that stone to which you point, said Scrooge, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they shadows of things that may be only? 
Still the ghost pointed downward to the grave by which it stood. Men's courses will foreshadow certain ends to which, if persevered in, they must lead, said Scrooge. But if the courses be departed from, the ends will change. Say it is thus with what you show me. Spirit, he cried, tight, tight clutching at its robe. Hear me, I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been, but for this intercourse. Why show me this if I am past all hope? For the first time the hand appeared to shake. Good spirit, he pursued, as down upon the ground he fell before it. Your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Assure me that I may yet change these shadows you have shown me. By an altered life, the kind hand trembled. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Oh, tell me I may sponge away the writing on this stone. So what we see through this story is the steps to confession. First of all, there was a desire to have wished he had done things differently. First of all, he's recognizing that with the, um, his clerk and the little boy who sang at his door. He's just saying, I wish. The second thing you see is his concern for others. He cares about Tiny Tim. So suddenly he cares for another person. The third step was his gratefulness to others. He felt grateful for, to his nephew for giving him a toast and for the joy he had brought in being at that partner. Then we see him talking about, I am not the man I was. He recognizes the need to change. And then we have his full confession. So these are the steps to any kind of redemption or confession that we have to start sometimes very small for many people. So now let us proceed to the story and the ending of the story. Yes, and the bedpost was his own. The bed was his own. The room was his own. Best and happiest of all, the time before him was his own to make amends in. I will live in the past, the present and the future, Scrooge repeated as he scrambled out of bed. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven and the Christmas time be praised for this. I say it on my knees, old Jacob, on my knees. He was so fluttered and so glowing with good intentions that his broken voice could scarcely answer to his call. He had been sobbing violently in his conflict with the spirit and his face was wet with tears. They are not torn down, cried Scrooge, folding one of his bed curtains in his arms. They are not torn down, rings and all. They are here. I am here. The shadows of the things that have been may be dispelled. They will be. I know they will. His hands were busy with his garments all the time, turning them inside out, putting them on upside down, tearing them, mislaying them, making them parties to every kind of extravagance. I don't know what to do, cried Scrooge laughing and crying in the same breath and making a perfect lacoon of himself with his stockings. I am as light as a feather. I am as happy as an angel. I am as merry as a schoolboy. I am as giddy as a drunken man. A Merry Christmas to everybody. A Happy New Year to the, all the world. Hello here. Whoop! Hello!
Scrooge received a gift, a gift of a chance to change. But it wasn't something he wished for. Can you think of a time that you have gotten a gift that you did not know you wanted, but got it anyway? You're wait. You're so far back, Sharon. We can't hear you. You're not being picked up by the mic. Sorry. Um, I think the example of that is when you receive something from someone that is just a real special. It doesn't even have to be anything fantastic, but something that's special and uh not ever expected and that kind of a gift is showing you uh, also it's kind of an evaluation of what is it i have been doing or not doing um you know, i can't give you specifics because you know it's been little things throughout the years well, I can give you a specific. I received a little figurine of a St. Lucia doll. <laughs> Unexpected, but it meant a lot to me because this was the first year we could not have our St. Lucia breakfast that we've had since I have been at Richwood. And so it was a huge disappointment. So you gave it to me right before, for St. Lucia Day, you and Barb gave me this gift, but it also says, when you get that kind of a gift, it says, the giver knows you well. I mean, it wasn't a big deal, but it meant a lot because of its meaning to me. And that's a really special kind of gift. Not one I asked for, not one I was expecting, but one that said to me, Sharon and Barb know me well and have given me this gift. Can you think of an example, Richard? Um, well, I was struggling with, with coming up with one that was totally unexpected because um, the one that I thought of was the earbuds that you got me for um, my birthday because I, I knew you were going to get me something so it wasn't totally unexpected but the gift itself was I didn't expect that and it did show a lot of thought and consideration for the, uh, the gift that you chose so that, that's the closest I can come up with but it wasn't like you're totally a gift out of the blue kind of thing One of the things relating the whole idea of gift giving to um, the Christmas story, which is hard to imagine now that we've probably all taken down our trees. Um, <clears throat> but there's really three scenes in the Christmas story. The scene of Mary and Joseph having the baby in Bethlehem, and then the shepherds out in the field and the angels come, and then the shepherds come to see the child. But in each of these scenes is the manger. And, and the, Mary places the baby in the manger. The, the angels announce that the baby is in the manger. The um, shepherds come and see the baby in the manger. And it's almost as though the message is being sent that of the coming communion, that we will that communion, the bread of communion and the feed box or the bread for the animals is where Jesus arrived and it's re-emphasized in a trio like that in the Christmas story. Redemption is, and that was not an expected gift, the manger itself. I mean, it's a symbol now. We call it a manger scene. I mean, everything around that becomes a gift 
And redemption is like that in that God has offered us salvation and we can choose to receive it. Scrooge was offered a second chance and now he can either use it or say, oh, that was a terrible nightmare <laughs> and go back to his old way of life. One of the, so we see Scrooge is lost and then found. And if you remember the three parables in scripture about lost and found, the sheep, the coin, and the prodigal son, every one of them ends with rejoicing, with a party. And so this is what we would expect to see then in chapter five of the Christmas Carol is rejoicing. We also see some other symptoms in what I just read to you, which um, of confession, it talks about he was sobbing violently. Many times when we're really at a point of low, the tears come quite easily in our confession. And he actually said, my his time, I think the quote was, um, time before him was his own to make amends. So we own our time and what we do with that time is of our own choosing. And we realize that at a time of confession. And then you see the rejoicing, the rejoicing as he's going crazy with his clothes and calling out to no one in particular, Merry Christmas. He's having his own little party in his bedroom. So um, we see the rejoicing also that's part of the entire confession process. Yes. This curtain on and close on upside down and <laughs> inside out. He said. Visualizing that, I was going. That sounds like the kids when they were little and they were playing tents and doing different things like that. <laughs> well, he needed to find the child within. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they want to add here or? Okay, I will continue through the next page. He had frisked into the sitting room and was now standing there, perfectly winded. There's the saucepan that the gruel was in, cried Scrooge, starting off again and going round the fireplace. There's the door by which the ghost of Marley entered. There's the corner where the ghost of Christmas present sat. There's the window where I saw the wandering spirits. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. <laughs> really for a man who had been out of practice for so many years, it was a splendid laugh, a most illustrious laugh. The father of a long long line of brilliant laughs. I don't know what day of the month it is, said Scrooge. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Hello, whoop, hello there. He was checked in his transports by the churches, ringing out the lustiest peals he had ever heard. Clang, clang, hammer, ding dong, bell, bell, ding dong, hammer, clang, clash. Oh, glorious, glorious. Running to the window, he opened it and put out his head. No fog, no mist, clear, bright, jovial, stirring, cold, cold, piping for the blood to dance to, golden sunlight, heavenly sky, Sweet, fresh air, merry bells. Oh, glorious, glorious. What's today, cried Scrooge, calling down to, downward to a boy in Sunday clothes, who perhaps had loitered in to look about him. Eh? returned the boy with all his might of wonder. What's today, my fine fellow, said Scrooge. Today, replied the boy, why Christmas day. Oh, it's Christmas day, said Scrooge to himself. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Hello, returned the boy. 
Okay. Coming back to discussion. Huh. <laughs> I said my notes from last time already here. And there was a question. And it's not on this sheet. So, we'll have to make up our own question. Well, give us the answer. We'll give it you uh, the response in the form of a question. Kind of like oh, Jeopardy. Kind of like Jeopardy. Okay. So, the answer is... Why do you think it was important? Oh, that's the question. That's, yeah, you got to go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I have to give why it was important. Okay. It was Christmas Day. <laughs> Make up the question. <laughs> Can't believe I forgot to write down the question. That's my my error. But here we are in a situation. Now he is looking. Why do you think he's he's lost track of time and place and days and all those spirits came bouncing in on him? And you would begin to wonder. You know, when you have dreams, sometimes you think it's taken place over a period of weeks in a dream and when you wake up you go oh my oh it's only the next day and i think that's kind of the way he came across here is that oh my i didn't realize all the spirits were here in the same night um it's didn't... funny how how in that sense things are um disoriented yeah yeah I think Jacob Marley told him that they would come one each night, didn't he? He did, yeah. But even that would still be confusing. Um, because I thought when, um, when he left, when the clerk left, wasn't that Christmas Eve? Yes. And we had to come back on Christmas Day. And so... Well, he was going to take Christmas Day off. He would be off Christmas Day and come back the day after. Yeah. So I'm thinking that part of the reason might be that one of the things Scrooge says when he um, wakes up in the morning, or well, it says somewhere in the end, ending of the story that he was treating every day as if it was Christmas Day. And so yes. here you had this uh, series of events that first he was told would take place over a series of nights, and then in effect it only took place over one night, and he woke up and it was Christmas Day, and that later statement about how he was going to live as, as if every day were Christmas Day now. Right. There's some connection there with that idea as to why it was Christmas Day when he woke up uh, because it's supposed to be Christmas every day if we really have our hearts in the right place. Right. So one of the things Scrooge promises is that he is going to change from this point on. And we have a very short bit of the school of the story left. But I want you to try to keep track, if you've got something to write with, do you have something to write with? No, not unless I get up and go get it. Okay, well you're gonna have to try to keep track in your head then of all of the changes that take place. And I, I've listed them out and there are huge changes as we go ahead and finish this story. Is this my Menti Fulstein test for my mental acuity? <laughs> That's right. If you, um, <laughs> well, or you can just stop. You can just stop me and say, there's one. Okay. If that's helpful. 
Okay, so he said, hello, my fine fellow. Hello, returned the boy. Do you know the polters in the next street but one at the corner? Scrooge inquired. I should hope I did, replied the lad. An intelligent boy, said Scrooge. A remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey. The big one? What? The one as big as me, returned the boy. What a delightful boy, said Scrooge. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, replied the boy. Is it, said Scrooge. Go and buy it. Walker, exclaimed the boy. No, 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 said Scrooge. I'm in earnest. Go and buy it and tell him to bring it here, that I may give them the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. The boy was off like a shot. He must have had a steady hand at a trigger who could have got a shot off half so fast. I'll send it to Bob Cratchit's, whispered Scrooge, rubbing his hands and splitting with a laugh. He shan't know who sends it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Joe Miller never made such a joke as sending it to Bob's will be. The hand in which he wrote the address was not a steady one, but write it he did somehow and went downstairs to open the street door, ready for the coming of the Poulter's man. As he stood there waiting for his arrival, the knocker caught his eye. I shall love it as long as I live, cried Scrooge, patting it with his hand. I scarcely ever looked at it before. What an honest expression it has in its face. It's a wonderful knocker. Here's the turkey. Hello, whoop, how are you? Merry Christmas. It was a turkey. He never could have stood upon his legs, that bird. He would have snapped them short off in a minute like sticks of sealing wax. Why, it's impossible to carry that to Camden Town, said Scrooge. You must have a cab. The chuckle with which he said this, and the chuckle with which he paid for the turkey, and the chuckle with which he paid for the cab, and the chuckle with which he recompensed the boy, were only to be exceeded by the chuckle with which he sat down breathless in his chair again and chuckled till he cried. So let's just go ahead and stop there. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in that. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Go ahead and tell me. I ran me. out of fingers. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. They are? Um, well, well I, I, uh, when? No, go ahead, Richard. I was gonna say he complimented the boy twice. He was generous to the boy. He he, he uh, came up with the gift for Bob Cratchit. He welcomed the poulterer at the door, which was unusual for him. He, he, he admired the knocker, loved the knocker, and greeted the poulter. He got him a cab, and he chuckled a lot. <laughs> He had a lot of a, a lot of joy of doing things for others. You know, every one of those was doing something for somebody else, and um, starting with the boy, uh, complimenting the boy, and asking the boy to do something for him. It's interesting that the boy didn't stand back because I'm sure he had a characteristic in the neighborhood of being the old crotchety man <laughs> don't talk to him and so you know that the boy was able to receive what he was offering you know was able to take a command and go forth and do it um and 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 for him to be able to see that and to compliment him and reward him but at first the boy thought he'd gone crazy now he's gone from a yeah. crotchety old man to an insane yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. Our author also points out that the first gift that um, Scrooge gives is turkey, meat, or food. Again, a feast at a table. And he thought that was really significant, again, as part of 
um, the generosity. It may have been coincidence by the author, but um, Matt Raleigh thought it was really important. Okay. Well, it's talking again of, of coming together, being in, in um, a congregation, being together and eating uh, instead of bread, it's turkey here, but you know, yeah, and that brings a joy. Yeah, and we never know what happens in the household either. He doesn't share with us what happened in that household when it's uh, arrived. Anything else before I go on? Well, when it's arrived, it would be like the little statue you got. It's such a surprise and unexpected, and especially from Scrooge. You know? <laughs> Shaving was not an easy task, for his hand continued to shake very much. And shaving requires attention, even when you don't dance while you are at it. But if he had cut the end of his nose off, he would have put a piece of sticking plaster over it and been quite satisfied. He dressed himself all in his best and at last got out into the streets. The people were by this time pouring forth as he had seen them with the ghost of Christmas present and walking with his hands behind him. Scrooge regarded everyone with a delightful smile. He looked so irresistibly pleasant in a word that three or four good humored fellows said, good morning, sir, a Merry Christmas to you. And Scrooge said often afterwards that of all the blithe sounds he had ever heard, those were the blithest in his ears. He had not gone far when coming on towards him, he beheld the portly gentleman who had walked into his counting house the day before and said, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. It sent a pang across his heart to think how this old gentleman would look upon him when they met. But he knew what path lay before him and he took it. My dear sir, said Scrooge, quickening his pace and taking the old gentleman by both hands, his hands. How do you do? I hope you seceded yesterday. It was very kind of you. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. Mr. Scrooge? Yes, said Scrooge. That is my name, and I fear it may not be pleasant to you. Allow me to ask your pardon, and will you have the goodness here Scrooge whispered in his ear. Lord bless me, cried the gentleman, as if his breath were taken away. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? If you please, said Scrooge, not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Will you do me that favor? My dear sir, said the other, shaking hands with him, I don't know what to say to so much, to such benefit. Don't say anything, please, retorted Scrooge. Come and see me. Will you come and see me? I will, cried the gen old gentleman, and it was clear he meant to do it. Thank ye, said Scrooge. I am much obliged to you. I thank you 50 times. Bless you. Okay, did you run out of fingers that time? Sharon? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> You want to talk this time? Well, he was thrilled with um, the, the Scrooge was so excited and going outside. I loved his posture with his hands behind him that he no longer felt like he was just the grumpy old person that needed to be sauntering down the street with a grouchy look, but he was happy to um, have the spirit of Christmas. That's, that's a way I'll word that. And then to meet people that he had been so nasty to and confronting them rather than skirting around and mumbling something ornery or nasty. It was just a, it's just, and that's the example of what we have been told we should be doing at all times with those around us. So it's, it's a big lesson there and then forgiving the guy, forgiving him his debt, reminding us of Christ, 
for giving us our debt. Actually, it was the guys that tried to collect for donations. They had come into oh. his office. That's what. Okay. That's who they're meeting that's in the street. But that's a good example. Anyway, Christ forgiving debt. I noticed one other thing. Did you see it, Richard? Well, I noticed a few things. He danced while he was shaving. <laughs> took a lot of pride in his appearance. He dressed in his best clothes. He went out on the street. He smiled at people. And he had a pleasant look about him, which he never had before. He felt a pang in his heart when he saw the guys who were trying to get collect for charity. He never had a pang in his heart before. <laughs> um, of course, then he gave to the charity, but it also says that he spoke kindly to them and he asked a favor of them if they would allow him to give this gift. And he invited them to visit him and said he was very obliged to them and thanked them and blessed them. So he showered all of these kinds of verbal things which never he had uttered before um, in the story. So there were a lot of things that were signs, I think, of his change. Yeah, one of the things that I really liked the way um, Charles Dickens put in the story that he had such a look about him that people greeted him first. And he was so amazed at this. Um, so I thought that was really cool as well. Okay. He went to church and walked about the streets and watched the people hurrying to and fro and patted children on the head and questioned beggars and looked down into the kitchens of houses and up to the windows and found that everything could yield him pleasure. He had never dreamed that any walk, that anything could give him so much happiness. In the afternoon, he turned his steps toward his nephew's house. He passed the door a dozen times before he had the courage to go up and knock, but he made a dash and did it. Is your master at home, my dear? Said Scrooge to the girl. Nice girl, very. Yes, sir. Where is he, my love? Said Scrooge. He's in the dining room, so, sir, along with mistress. I'll show you upstairs if you please. Thank ye. He knows me, said Scrooge, with his hand already on the dining room lock. I'll go in here, my dear. He turned it gently and sidled his face in round the door. They were looking at the table, which was spread out in great array, for these young housekeepers are always nervous on such points and like to see that everything is right. Fred, said Scrooge, dear heart, Dear heart alive, how his niece by marriage started. Scrooge had forgotten for the moment about her sitting in the corner with the footstool or he wouldn't have done it on any account. Why, bless my soul, cried Fred. Who's that? It's I, your uncle Scrooge. I have come to dinner. Will you let me in, Fred? Let him in. It is a mercy he didn't shake his arm off. He was at home in five minutes. Nothing could have be hardier. His niece looked just the same. So did Topper when he came. So did the plump sister when she came. So did everyone when they came. Wonderful party, wonderful games, wonderful unanimity, wonderful happiness. Now that's all we get on that party. So what did you notice there? Besides showing up at his nephew's? Well, it's a good homecoming. <laughs> you know, no, they, he shocked him that he showed up. And then to be so pleasant in showing up. <laughs> it would be very shocking. It's. You know, when you're used to asking people to come to your home and and you've asked them over and over and over and they've never shown up and when they finally show up, 
you're so shocked you don't know what to do. <laughs> I think that I think it's a neat thing, and um, all the characters look the same to him. We don't know uh, outside of the spirit showing him them having a dinner around the table and all that. Um, again, there's that time difference of okay. Was he showing them what they currently look like? So you don't know what that is. But his perception, walking down the street and picking up on all of creation, picking up on all of the people, and, which is something that so many of us don't do. We don't notice the small things around us. We don't see the flower that's the shape of a heart, or we don't see... Um, the animals and the way they may support one another or whatever. I think he's all of a sudden his eyes aren't open to him, but they're open to everything around him. And the joy that you get out of that. Yeah, he didn't know a walk could bring such pleasure. I'm surprised they didn't mention a breeze, you know, because that's another thing that people don't often pick up on when they're walking. They don't pick up of the gentle breeze that may hit their face when you're walking. I don't know, in winter, and there is no such thing as a gentle breeze. It's cold if there's a breeze. <laughs> Puts icicles on the eyelashes. <laughs> Anything you want to add, Richard? Um, well, I went to church. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> we told that he didn't go to church before, but wouldn't have seemed in his character. Yeah. Would have been nice to know if he sat in the front or the back. <laughs> kids on the head and he... And yeah. He talked, to talked to beggars. Can you imagine? After he shooed away a little boy singing God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. So that's pretty cool. Okay. The ending. But he was early at the office next morning. Oh, he was early there. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he had set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No Bob. A quarter past. No Bob. He was full 18 minutes and a half behind his time. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come into the tank. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his paint pen, as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Hello, growled, growled Scrooge in his accustomed voice, as near as he could feign it. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir, said Bob. I am behind my time. You are, repeated Scrooge. Yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you please. It's only once a year, sir, pleaded Bob, appearing from the tank. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend, said Scrooge. I am not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, he continued, leaping from his stool and giving Bob such a dig in the waistcoat that he staggered back into the tank again. And therefore, I am about to raise your salary. Bob trembled and got a little nearer to the ruler. He had a momentary idea of knocking Scrooge down with it holding him and calling to the people in the court for help and a straight waistcoat. A Merry Christmas, Bob, said Scrooge, with an earnestness that could not be mistaken, as he clapped him on the back. A merrier Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. And we will discuss your affairs this afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop, Bob. Make up the fires and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. 
He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh and little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good at which some people did not have their fill of laughter in the outset. And knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes in grins as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well. If any man alive possessed the knowledge, may that be truly said of us and all of us. And so as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us everyone. And now we have completed together the entire story of the Christmas Carol. And I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I thank you guys for hanging on with me through way past Christmas. But I just was really touched by how much this story has to teach us. And maybe this is one that should be done like um, in October. It started in October. Uh, you know, doing it for Halloween. The spirits. And, and, and getting <laughs> people in the right frame of mind for Christmas. Actual Christmas. I, I, you know, it's it's got lessons there. Because you could throw more biblical things in there than he has brought out. Um, of the different stories that Jesus uses. And with this last piece here, I was thinking of how Paul changed, uh, Saul changed to Paul, you know, because of Christ coming to him and blinding him so that he could see. And I think that's what happens here. You see that in this last section that, you know, I was so blind and was so crotchety and I could care less about everybody or had his own agenda. And now all of a sudden he is changed and he's out to, to do what he should be doing all the time. I mean, it's just phenomenal when you look at it from the way this author put it together. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, a lot of the Bible stories were brought in more than I brought them in because of time. Okay. Um, so Matt Raleigh did bring in several of the Bible stories. I felt I would just touch on some and I pick, I chose those. So just in um, respect for the author, I, I want to make that clear. <laughs> I won't cut the author anymore. <laughs> Were you going to say something, Richard? I was going to say and, you know, that Charles Dickens was a Christian, of course. And so I think that comes through in so much of his story. And I think there is a lot of parallels to um, to the Bible in, in his story. But the one that I think I always find very interesting at the end when he's talking about, um, about Scrooge's changed nature and all of the wonderful things that he did. He did, a, I forget the exact wording now that you just read to us, but that he did all of these things and infinitely more. When you think about infinite, we think about eternity. And nobody could do infinitely more anyway. It's not possible. It's only possible in a kind of a spiritual, um, eternal sense. So I think that was a very interesting way of phrasing kind of his evolution and the changes that took place in him. What I'm amazed is that the change is stuck. More often than not, that's not what you see within human nature. People start out with really 
great ideas of how they're going to change their life and become a different person. And it's so easy to fall back into old habits and old ways of doing things. And um, so the resolutions, the new, yeah, that's what I was thinking of the new year's resolutions. But what, what made Scrooge different was he was changed on the inside. I mean, he, he totally changed inside first before the outside changed. And I think that's what needs to happen to all of us, that inside we have to be in a place of what we talked about um, for the confession. Um, I have to get back to the list, but, you know, going through the steps, first of all, taking it in, wishing we had done things differently and then showing our concern for others and then gratefulness. So it's wishing, concern, gratefulness, and then, then recognizing the need to change and then coming into a confession. And I think sometimes we, we just say, I'm sorry and do the same thing over and over again. And, um, so I think it's, a. um, a perspective on the inside that you have to understand what it is you're doing and how it affects people and why you know all of the other aspects of that and the wishing part even and the gratefulness part um, to really change um, our behavior on the outside and I think that was what made the difference okay I am NOT going to talk for a half hour we're gonna end early <laughs> but I will close in prayer. Gracious God, you who make all things new, renew us this day and every day so that we might be strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit to reach out in love and service to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Good night and God bless. you were doing that on Facebook and it's not shutting off clerk or something like that